you eat fast food and lose weight is today's podcast. My name is Jodie Bunting and today my special guest is Lytton Alley, who is the author of Fast Food 30. He's from London and I met him on a live obesity debate on GB News. And the reason I'm laughing is... We didn't really know what we were doing on that debate. Did it, it was a bit of a strange one. We we all turned up looking into the camera. I didn't realise there were two other people there. And it's one of those channels that makes inflammatory comments. And if, if you don't have people who are, I mean, if you don't have people who want to make inflammatory comments, and you've got loads of lovely smiley people like, like Jodie on there, what <laughs> happens is we all just kind of talk and then the host starts going a bit nuts and having a go at somebody. And that was weird. I think uh, Narinda had, had a bit of a... Uh, telling off yes yeah, you we didn't get told off though that was probably a good thing <laughs> we survived it <laughs> right so listen the the best thing about gb news was the fact that i got to be introduced to yourself so first of all would you like to tell everyone your personal weight loss story first of all i love being the best thing about gb news uh take that that crown from nigel farage uh my weight loss story is it, it's quite it's quite recent so uh a year ago I'd accidentally become, I was 94 and a half kilograms, nearly. that's how much I weighed. I'm not a, a very tall guy, so I, I was way over in BMI to, to the obesity side of the scale. Um, it, it crept up on me. I was a stay-at-home dad of twins uh, during the pandemic, and, you know, we were all kind of locked away. It was illegal to take my kids to the park for a bit. It was crazy. And I think what also really happened was um, my health suffered massively. I was being investigated for, I was having constant migraines, doctors were worried there was something wrong with my heart. And I think he, there was a suggestion from a doctor that maybe you should look at your weight. And I basically nearly told him to, you know, F off because I felt, felt like, well, we're, we're on the phone. You haven't even looked at my weight, but looking yeah. back, I'm so right. Um, so I, I kind of, I've always been a bit of a, a, I'd say a little bit dumpy on the dumpy side. Um, not not the a thin kid as it were and i've always been a bit muscly so i've always been a bit overweight in one way or another but sometimes excused it with it's muscle but i've never i've never felt like i was a really unhealthy weight but i did get to an unhealthy weight and then i lost uh i've now lost 26 and a bit kilograms and i've done that using uh, an app which is a, a premium kind of weight loss service uh, weight loss platform that i joined uh, when I got given a job, so it was completely coincidental. I think I would have carried on putting on weight, to be honest, because when I was trying, I was trying meal replacements uh, paired with a smart scale and trying to do, I drank bulletproof coffee, I was doing intermittent fasting, I was doing a couch to 5K all at once, yeah. and my smart scales were just telling me, you are putting on weight gradually. <laughs> So it was a very confusing time and I was kind of I was saved by by the new job I got going back to work. So the, but the turning point was your doctor then telling you you need to do something about it? Um, no, I wouldn't say so. I, I'd say that my doctor, I, I kind of filed to, oh no, you can shut up. The turning point was talking to an old friend of mine, a guy who used to be my boss, who he explained type 2 diabetes to me in a way that I'd never heard before. I, I didn't really know what type two diabetes was. What I did know is my mother was pre-diabetic and I was like, oh, so there's two types of diabetes. Oh well, um, and just moved on. And then he explained it to me and I suddenly thought, oh, actually, so what you're saying to me is I am probably pre-diabetic at this weight because, you know, I, I'm, I'm related to my mother and I thought it was gonna be genetic and he explained to me that type 2 diabetes is something you kind of uh, can bring on to yourself by wearing out the insulin response that your body has. So when you are putting way too much energy into your body, your blood sugar rapidly goes up uh, and your body just wants to have around five grams, like a, a teaspoonful of sugar in the system at one given time. And just eating something like one piece of toast can make your blood sugar go up rapidly. And what happens is your body deals with that, puts it away. Um, uh, and I, I was like, OK, so that that actually I think I learned that at school. It just wasn't relevant information to me. And suddenly he made it relevant to me by saying, well, that's what your mum's been doing for so long that her system's nearly worn out. Yeah. Uh, a year later, she is now a type two diabetic for full blown. And it, it seems like an identity to her for me. I'm, I actually work with lots of people who are reversing their type 2 diabetes, literally reversing their type 2 diabetes in a month or two. And so the, the turning point for me was 
going, oh, hang on a minute, I've got two kids. Type 2 diabetes sounds like something that could lead to, you know, amputations, all these other different things. Yeah. Maybe there's a health problem coming for me. So what did you do actually? Did you completely change what food you were eating or was it a slow progress? I was, so after I, I, I got this job, now I, I can't talk about my weight loss without talking about where I work, unfortunately. So I started working for this company, Limbo. Um, it, it's, it's been in the news recently. It's backed by Shaquille O'Neal and many other people. But after I started working with Limbo, what Limbo gave me was they slapped something on my arm that does continuous glucose monitoring so it monitors your blood sugar levels and it does it, it's centered around that because blood sugar is really important in weight gain and weight loss so when you have excessive blood sugar what happens is your body well it packs that sugar away as i was saying but it, it packs it away for later it's storing the energy for later and you know we never get to that later because we just need to go to the fridge or the supermarket or deliver or whatever but what we're feeding is a body that was, you know, evolved a long time ago in the Stone Age for feast or famine. So it's focused on blood glucose. But what it really does is it kind of gives you, it, it coaches you into understanding the impact food has on your body. So whenever you eat, about 20 to 40 minutes later, depending on how, how your body's reacting at the time, you start to see what happens. You've got this little blue line that's nice and stable. And then you might eat something like a, a normal breakfast for me might have been something like two chapatis and a banana. And what I would have seen from that was my blood sugar was nice and stable. I ate breakfast and suddenly up it goes like this. And then you have a, a spike and a crash. Yeah. And looking at that and being coached into why that was happening got me to understand, oh, wow, so hang on, whenever this line goes red, I'm stopping my body from accessing stored fat that my body's storing for later. And also, I'm adding more fat to it. Yeah. So I gradually got nudged out of those things by, by starting to essentially learn to navigate the world a little bit better. I learned to make choices about food that were just, um, just kept me in fat burning mode, first of all, uh, which I didn't know about at all because it, it's really confusing. You get told to count calories, for example, and that's the whole point of calories it has always confused me because a calorie I was taught at school is a unit of heat. So how can you have calories on a plate? And it turns out you can't have calories on a plate. You have to actually eat food to make yep. calories at heat. So it's just a weird coping mechanism the world's use. But when you can see your blood sugar and what it's doing, and you compare that with data like you know heart rate and whatever else, you can start to see the impact of food. So for me, what I also had because of this job was I had access to everybody else's data. So what you do with the app is you take photos of what you're eating. So when I joined, I was like, I was told, look, you could think about reducing carbohydrates. I didn't really know what carbohydrates were. I thought I did, but I, was, I thought, oh, okay, fine. Hotel breakfast, I won't eat any bread. Uh, you know you know how you go to hotel breakfast and, and if, you're, if you're on holiday especially, you'll, you'll start with bread and eggs and whatever. But then you'll end up also eating uh, breakfast dessert and then a yeah. croissant, finish off and whatever else. And hey, they, they've got actual ice cream here. You'll eat whatever you want. And it's amazing. But for me, what happened is the first day I threw away the toast. And I was like, this little app is not going to tell me don't eat carbohydrates today. Yeah. And I did. And I had to go looking. And I was like, what, what the heck? Where are the carbohydrates here? And I went on a bit of a learning journey, like day by day, almost meal by meal. Um, it was almost like this app was reviewing my meals and saying, right, th this is what you did wrong here. And here's the evidence in your body. And I learned baked beans have loads of carbohydrates and I thought they were a protein thing. So then I had all these other people. I, I had like loads and loads of data points, like thousands of them. And I thought, right, I'm going to get one of the geeks at work to look at what the highest weight loss performers eat. And I'm going to just copy that because I'm all about efficiency. I need, I'm, I'm very busy. Yeah. You know, I have a job that sees me traveling all the time. I've got these two wonderful kids to look after. I'm busy doing that stuff. And I, I'm not about to, to start planning meals, right? Um, and then, so th this analysis comes back to me. It's got kebabs in there. It's got burgers. It's like literally doner kebabs dripping with grease. Um, it's got burgers with cheese, all the stuff that you think you shouldn't eat. It's literally got KFC in there. And I'm yeah. thinking, KFC, PFC, pretend fried chicken of all sorts, right? 
And, and I'm thinking, this doesn't make any sense. But what's happened is all these Limbo users have, have kind of learned a way. It's like a tribe of people who've learned a way to navigate to the right choices and then adapt food accordingly. So I just went around and thought, this is amazing. This is, it, it kind of became the most interesting part of my job for a while. Um, and I, I did lose weight by eating fast food uh, at least three times a week, if not more, originally. So yeah. I went this long process over about nine months of losing maybe about 23 to 25 kilograms, can't remember exactly, um, and then stopped losing weight. I was like, look, I'm quite happy now. Um, and then in January, uh, I decided, look, I'm, I'm launching the book. What better way to launch the book than just eat nothing but fast food for 30 days? And that's exactly what I did, which was, it, it was funny because when you talk to like, I, you know, you talk to certain people and they think fast food is an affordable way to eat. I'm not sure why. It's this crazy idea that, you know, it's like a, it, it's a crazy idea that posh people I have, uh, have, I think, which is, oh yeah, poor people eat fast food because they don't know any better. And it's just not true because yep. our system isn't cheap. The company I work for, the system isn't cheap. So therefore I, I, I often go and meet these members and I'm like, you guys are like really, you know, you, posh and, and you drive posh cars and whatever but you go and eat tesco meal deals this is weird yeah but that that's that's what super rich people do sometimes they'll eat fast food all the time because it's just time is more valuable to them than anything else absolutely yeah so january for me was a super expensive month there were times when i was eating three meals of fast food a day and it's cost me 55 pounds plus which is it's what it costs to get fast food delivered to you but i was literally i, I was eating doner kebabs for breakfast i was eating uh, um cheeseburgers triple cheeseburgers i was eating kfc i was eating i discovered a whole new world of fast food like um i, I was defining it fast and quick service so burritos which uh came from tortilla and things like Mexican street food, Indian street food. I had a wonderful time of eating all the stuff that you're told not to eat. I discovered all these new brands that I, I never even heard of because I just thought, well, I don't eat fast food because it's making me fat. And the where I started um, in January, I started off with a blood test. I started off going to see a GP uh, and I got it on video so that um, we could kind of see what he said. And he said, Lynn, I'm really worried about your cholesterol because it's a little bit high. It's 7.4, that's a little bit high, but you've got a good mix of cholesterol, so we're okay with that. Yeah. But I'm worried where you're gonna go in 30 days time, you're just gonna go and eat fast food. I think you're gonna come back to me at the end of January and, and we might have to have a serious talk. And I said, okay, that was like an off camera comment. Um, so I went back to see him and I had my blood test done. I get a phone call from him uh, a couple of days later and he said Lynn we have to talk you have to tell me what you did uh, and he didn't get to the point of the numbers first and I wish he had because I thought oh, what's he gonna say what's he discovered <laughs> uh, and he said oh your, your blood I thought you'd seen your blood test I was like no I, I just I didn't log in because I don't really understand numbers and he went oh I've got to tell you and he said you've gone from 7.4 to 5.4 that's a massive drop in a month yeah. it, it's I still don't fully understand but what I know is it was it was not bad because of the mix was good, but where he expected it's gonna go up a bit and we should worry, he said it's gone down. And your body fat's gone down and you know, you look different and it, it you can lose weight by eating fast food. And I've written a book about how to do it. And this is, you know, this is the genius in losing weight. It doesn't just help one thing. It actually helps every single internal organ, every single calculation of our health. It improves everything automatically. And it's so good that the, the, the doctor like was, wow. And that, and look at their prediction. If, they, if you ask them, if I do this, what's going to happen? It was totally wrong, wasn't it? It, it was, but that's because... I said, look, I've written a book called Fast Food 30 and I want to eat fast food and nothing but fast food. And he hadn't read the book. After yeah. he read the book, he said, okay, I understand what you're doing now. Because what the book does is it helps you navigate your way around fast food. Uh, and the thing about fast food, fast food is really, really well designed to make a profit for fast food companies. McDonald's isn't known as one of the smallest companies in the world, right? Yeah. That they're a highly profitable company. Um, as most food businesses try to be profitable and that's one of the problems that we have the system is massively stacked against us so 
if you eat fast food as you think about you know the common perception of it well what you do is you, you go into the the fast food vendor and they're pushing things at you they you'll ask for something like a, a, a cheeseburger and they'll say would you like to make it a meal would you like to supersize it etc you you know why that is right it's yeah. because they're pushing you to profitable options for them and it's really hard to say no a lot of the time to that stuff because what what you're looking at is not it's not willpower it's not me going um oh yeah i should because that man asked me to or that woman asked me to it's me going well if i look at my bank balance and value that's yeah. a sensible decision well that's a very very clever psychological trick that's been pulled by you know m lots of dollars of marketing and branding and research have gone into helping you be pushed down that road so fast food 30 is about going into a place and going whoa look uh, like i can i can see through these tricks and i'm going to eat the things that my body wants not what your brand wants me to eat because it helps you with your shareholders yeah that's the difference and my one of my favorite things in the book was about the customization of mcdonald's because i personally do this i order a triple triple cheeseburger add all the free extras where you can add all the salad and things minus the bun and then you have there a low carb nutrient high meal it's genius it, it's it's really really smart mcdonald's and a few others do this as well uh, and i think the thing is a lot of people don't know i i've talked to so many people who've gone just the, if there was one thing in your book that was really wonderful to me it was that I, know that I can customize things and I think that's the trick to actually losing weight and keeping it off you have to get in the habit of customizing everything like yeah. wherever you are your whole life uh, and I think it's where do you do customization where do you start customization from well it, it, it's you develop your taboos so I, I have a, a, a brother who's two years older than me and you know we grew up together kind of eating chocolate bars every day and we're in very different shape but I think I got to about the same weight as him and he, he's had his weight for a bit longer um, but we have very different taboos and his taboos he's a he's a very very devout Muslim there are things that he will eat or won't eat rather that I might for example if I took him to a restaurant that served steak and chips um, two steak and chips please because you've got nothing else on the menu he would have to pick his plate up and go, I'm sorry, but only half of this to me is food. I can't eat that piece of steak. And I would say, oh, hang on a minute, I've got the same problem as you. Only half of the food on this for me is really edible food. I have a taboo here. I can't eat the chips because it's just empty energy that's gonna turn into sugar yeah. and I'm trying to lose weight. So I'd have to basically do exactly what I do in Fast Food 30, which is I'm gonna double up on the protein you can have the chips. I wouldn't let him have the chips. You do not eat the chips. Um, but for me, it's my taboos. So going through going through fast food 30, you have to look at it and say, you, you look at whatever you're given. If you're a vegetarian, for example, uh, my other half's a vegetarian. And I, one of the things that I notice that she does is if she goes to a restaurant that she, uh, her carnivorous friends have picked, she won't complain about it. She never has done. She's like, I'm easy, take me wherever. I'll just navigate my way through it. She might order um, one starter and two side dishes and say, can I have them all brought out with the main meals? And what happens so often is, is they get brought out as a bloody starter and a side, uh, you know, and later. Uh, and she gets fucked over by, but, excuse my language, sorry. She gets, right. she gets completely screwed over by it, but that's her way of navigating. You know, yeah. she's a way of life. And I think that's the same thing. So if you've got a specialist diet because you're Muslim or Hindu or whatever, or you've got a specialist, a specialist diet because you're vegetarian, it's not a diet that you go through for a month and think it's going to change my life. It's just how you live. And I think that's what you've got to think about with things like um, if you're trying to lose weight because you've had a weight problem, you've got to actually change the way you select foods and changing those little choices every day well, it's those little choices over a number of years that got you into the state you were in, in the first place. Yeah. So you've got to learn to undo them. That's much easier said than done. I've been there. It's very, very hard to do, but there are ways to do it. Can you briefly tell us about Limbo? Is it a set course? Is it a weekly coaching session thing? How does it work, Limbo? 
Limbo is, uh, it, it, for me, Limbo is amazing because what, what it does is it takes the guesswork out of weight loss. It uses your body's data. So you get to use uh, three wearable devices which tell Limbo, the service, uh, what your body's doing. All centers around blood glucose to start with. And then what it also does adds other pieces of data, the kind of things that an Apple Watch or smartwatch would, would, would pick up, like your heart rate, etc. Yeah. And that puts into context, along with some scales that track things like how much water, how much fat and muscle is in your body, all of that gives us a full picture of what your body's doing. And rather than give you some kind of one size fits all diet, uh, what we do is we actually give you feedback based on what you're doing. So first of all, you've got the wearables constantly transmitting your data. The next part is you log your meals, you log your choices. It's not just your meals, you log your exercise, you can log other things that affect weight loss as well. Sleep, uh, we automatically track sleep with wearables, but you can also log naps or whatever. You can also log stress uh, and various things like you know monthly cycles. Um, that gives us this amazing picture of exactly what's going on. And then it shows us what you're doing choice-wise. If you have this on you 24 seven, it, it keeps you so accountable, like nothing else. It's like, it's like having a personal trainer and nutrition coach go to bed with you and be like, Hey, on your wrist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on your wrist, right. On your wrist, on your arm. Uh, and for me, it, what, what happens with these, this kind of imaginary personal trainer is they constantly give you feedback. So it's a feedback loop. You get good feedback, you get, get bad feedback. If you've made a choice, such as, uh, I don't know, I went to that restaurant, I ate all the chips, my blood sugar started to spike. It will give me a little, hey, you know this isn't where we're trying to get to. Um, and I'll say, oh yeah. Uh, and like my, my toast throwing away, it also teaches you, look, this is where you should be heading. So there's lots of kind of stuff behind the scenes which teach you uh, about how to make the right choices, how to navigate next time you're, you're faced with the same choice. So that's the, the kind of the loop is that you have the wearables, you log your entries, Limbo then sees what your body's doing and then gives you uh, yeah. individualized feedback. And what happens is you get to go through all that again and you gradually, gradually, gradually start to learn to change your habits. And when I say gradually, it happens you know, pretty quickly. It happens within a month. People start to really change their habits. And people are losing you know, an average of three kilograms a month on the system at the moment. That's our most recent statistic. And it's through just accessing your fat. Stored fat is just a thing on your body. I do not believe there's such a thing as a fat person because the way I look at fat, yeah. fat is an energy source. It's like a reservoir of energy. It, you know, that my butt, my, my belly, that's a reservoir of energy that my body has kept because my body is super, super efficient at storing fat in my cells just in case I might die of starvation. Yeah. And, and Limbo allows you to access it by stopping you eating the things that stop you burning fat and helping you into habits uh, such as a lot of our members have cold showers and find they, they burn fat through it. And you'd be really surprised at how much and how, how little a cold shower you have to have. It's a well-known thing. It's been around for a long time, like cold water immersion. Um, but what our members have is they have the data. They basically get in the shower, go, oh, that was really, really cold, swear a lot, get out. <laughs> and then they, then they log it and they go, oh my God, like my blood sugar just went like this. And it's because your body just is trying always to protect you. Storing fat is a protective act. It's a protective act in nature, right? It's trying to make sure that you've got enough energy when you don't have food coming in. Getting rid of fat when you're in a cold shower is a protective act because it's it's your body making sure you're ready for this fight, uh, this life or death situation. You know, it's Jody, you've been plunged in a river and your heart's got to keep beating and your lungs have got to keep going. And most importantly, your brain's got to function. So I'm going to yeah. make glucose out of your stored fat is what's happening. So it's an amazing thing, but that's what Limbo allows you to access and you navigate your way through it. There's no prescriptive diet. There's no telling you what to do with exercise. And therefore, whereas diets, like, I, I know, I'm, I was gonna name a brand, I'm naming no brands. Diets try and get you to live in their world for a bit. Come, come live in my world for like, you know, 14 weeks. What we do is we say, let us live in your world and we'll help you adjust and shape your world and rewrite the story of your fate, your destiny, of your body. And if that happens to involve a lot of partying, uh, a big birthday, Christmas, yeah. or a holiday, whatever, 
you'll navigate all of those choices because for me, I did that while I was, you know, I lost my weight while I was traveling constantly. I was going to airports. I was flying over to America to meet Shaquille O'Neal. And like, you know, that's, that's, that's a pretty long flight where you get put in a tube. Every few hours, somebody comes and wakes you up and feeds you sugar. And yeah. it's, it's not the way you lose weight. But 10 hours of not walking at all, it's a crazy idea. But I still lost weight while I was doing that. I didn't get to work out much. Uh, it was a tiring time. But as you said, one there's something that you said, which is, is so true, is there are all these side benefits to weight loss that people don't talk about enough. Yeah. And I think, for me, I think clearer. Uh, I sleep an hour less a day. And that's weird, but it's so obvious why. My body was trying to recover for this extra, like, I, I've got to take a, I've got to take 25 kilograms of suitcases abroad tomorrow. And I'm thinking, <laughs> That's an immense amount of luggage. That's yeah. what's carrying up the So you mentioned Shaq there, um, the basketball player. When I first looked you up, I found the picture of you and him together. And I've got to ask you, uh, Lytton, is he really tall? Are you, re are you really small? What's happening there? It's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, I'd say. Uh, <laughs> the difference between us is about two or three inches, really. It's just... Oh, okay. uh, it's not. Uh, Sha Shaquille is seven foot one, um, and I am just about five foot five. I'm not even five foot five. So, what what happens is when we're stood next to each other and he's talking like he'd normally gesticulate, he has to be very careful because I'm literally up to his elbow, yeah, uh, w which is immense. But yeah, he a absolute superhuman. But also, he's an absolute superhuman. He's like the least celebrity celebrity you could work with. It's amazing. Perfect. What a guy. That's what you want on your business, isn't it? Now, I know this is going to be hard to do, but what I want you to do is to turn your book just into three top tips. So basically the top tips for people who want to eat whatever they like, they want to eat fast food or whatever. How can they do it? What are your top three tips? All right. Number one, the answer to eating well and losing weight is nutrient dense food that actually adds something, not just energy that's empty to your body, right? So you want to choose sources that your body has to work on, uh, which means increase the protein, don't increase the carbohydrates, because carbohydrates turn sugar and your body doesn't have to work to get to them. So the first thing, increase protein, I would say. So when you're going to adapt your menu or you're going to, um, a burrito is one of the things I was talking about. Um, double up on the meat. In fact, today I, I, I'm just about to do a, a relaunch of Fast Food 30. Um, so we're putting a version two up. And today I went to the German Donner Kebab place. And I said, can I please have the gym box, which has no bread in it. But I had to ask for two sets of extra meat and I had to go and find a manager to work out how to do that. So I've literally tripled the meat in the burger because that's how I lose weight. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's the first thing. Number two, don't be afraid of fat. Certainly do not eat low fat stuff. Low fat is this trick. It's a trick that was pulled by the sugar industry a long time ago, right? We all know that by now. Um, but what happens is you are just, you, you walk into a supermarket, you walk into something and you're given a low fat option. Low fat tends to have sugar put in it because otherwise you can't make it sellable. You can't make it tasty enough for somebody to, to sell it. So actually low fat, Yes, it has less fat in it, but fat actually doesn't make you fat in the way that sugar does, right? Fat doesn't add fat to your body in the same way. Sugar does it really, really quickly. Fat, it actually takes energy to break down. So I'd say don't be afraid of having the meat from a, um, from a fast food shop. That, that's the second thing. Yeah. Uh, and don't be afraid of the fat that's in like the meat. I think people get that wrong. Um, I think finally, I'd say just develop a sense of what you should and shouldn't eat. Develop your taboos, I'd say. Now, for me, when I've got a, a wrapped burger that's wrapped in paper, I take the wrapping paper off the burger. I don't just eat it because it's in front of me, right? You take the wrapping off. If you think about the design of a burger, well, the bread's really there just to hold the nutrients inside. It's an extended part of the packaging. You shouldn't necessarily have to eat that packaging. In fact, look at Cornish pasties. The way they were designed, they were for miners to eat meat and potatoes. Yeah. 
miners didn't used to eat the actual pastry because it would all be covered in black sooty, you know, you couldn't eat it. So the design was actually, you shouldn't have eaten all of the carbohydrates because you're double carving on a, uh, on a Cornish pasty. So try and navigate food design. Right, now, thank you so much, Litton. Uh, where can people find more information, A, about you, B, about your book, and the most importantly, about this limbo revolution? Right, so you will be able to find me. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Litton Alley. I'm on Instagram, uh, Litton.limbo. And you'll be able to find more information about Fast Food 30. In fact, I'll tell you what, uh, right now, if you go to fastfood30.com, uh, your viewers will be able to download a copy of the book for free because my company's left the free link up and they, they should have taken it away by now. But uh, you can go and do that now, fastfood30.com. But if, if that free link goes, it's on Amazon. So you can buy on Amazon too. Uh, and finally, Limbo, it's limborevolution.com. Um, we are, there's, there's some, quite a wait list I'd say at the moment, but um, basically, if you look at limborevolution.com and you like the idea of it, stick my name into the referral code uh, and you'll find that it gets flagged for me to look at and decide to skip you or not. Yay, great. Thank you so much for that. Um, it's been a real insight. And, you know, there's there's so much bad negative stuff about uh, fast food and, and processed food that it is great to see somebody who's got results and not only got results, but sharing the method with other people. Off camera, we've been discussing about me maybe doing a bit of limbo as well. So I'm really excited about that. I, I think it's going to it really change the way you see the world of food. I can't wait. Great, wonderful. Right, we'll let you get back to your two kids then. Uh, and thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Please remember to like, give me a comment, share with your friends, and of course, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.